What's up, YouTube? Um, today, this topic is going to be about um, toxic positivity. Because, you know, I, I read a lot of comments and I read comments on other people's videos, like motivational and uplifting videos. And a lot of people say in the comments, but how do I how do I stay happy when is I'm pretending to be happy or I'm putting on this facade of happiness. I was like, well, that that is a good question. And that made me evaluate what I was saying for some, some things. Cause you know, I feel like you shouldn't force happiness or to be calm or not to react in anger. But I feel like, uh, I feel like Toxic positivity can mess with somebody's head because then you're always reacting positive for everything. And that's not, to me, that's not normal. To others, to others that may be normal. But I think, sorry, I'm, I'm sucking on this peppermint. I like peppermints. But uh, I think toxic, pos toxic positivity can mess up relationships because instead of reacting every now and then and just letting things be how it naturally is either either i used to uh just ghost people or i wouldn't respond because i wanted to always have a positive mindset but let me know if you think that's bad because toxic positivity is reacting to every situation positively i mean sometimes i think you can react to it realistically you know let's say if uh you got fired or you stopped talking to this person. You don't have to react to them. You don't have to text them or tell them in a positive manner. You could just tell them how it is and how it, how your your uh, dynamic relationship or your yeah, your dynamic will change cuz that's naturally how things are. You know, if things are going to work out positively, it's going to come out positive, you know. Some things we think that we have control of and and sometimes we truly don't, you know. So I feel like don't always react positively, but react naturally, you know. If you feel angry at someone or a situation is affecting you really a lot mentally, then just, you know, let it go with the wind and let go, you know. Don't try to always control things. That's why I started looking into uh, Taoism, the philosophy of Taoism, letting things naturally be the way it is. You know, if someone doesn't like you, don't try to be a kiss up because no one likes a kiss up. No one likes those teacher pets. No one likes that. Um, I think, um, yeah, I think being, being naturally happy instead of putting on, like if you know you're sad because a relative died or you just got through a breakup or yeah, let's just say something bad happened to you or what society would say is bad you can react sad or angry but you know what's been helping me is when something bad happens to me as what society perceives as bad i just think maybe this was supposed to happen to me because i needed to grow as a person i deserve this because i hurt other people in the past and you know I was never, I, I would never say I had real relationships with girls. I would consider them like flings. That's why I'm growing as a person. I used to just, man, I used to just, I mean, probably to society, I was probably like a beta, but my mindset was somewhere else. As long as I smashed or as long as I, as long as I, um, yeah, as long as I smashed or as long as I got what, what I wanted from that person, I would just cut them off instantly. That was my mindset when I was younger. But now I grew as a person. I'd rather um, not make fake connections with people because, man, I was making a lot of fake connections. And, you know, life will, will humble you or it will teach you to not do certain things to certain people because... 
what you get in the end is what you deserve, you know. And sometimes a sad end is for a, a brighter beginning, you know. But that's that's my perspective on toxic positivity, you know. And I was I follow this philosophy uh, channel, I mean page on YouTube, I mean on Instagram, and they were saying how if you always think you 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 can do good, that is when evil arises, you know. Always thinking that you can never do bad, that's when evil or when you do bad actions to people. And that was my mindset a few years ago in high school. I was just doing what my natural impulses thought was good, you know. Sleeping with multiple girls, you know. Cause I would let girls think that we were dating even though I was dating like multiple girls and just, I was just, man, I was a messed up person. I was just, yeah. Yeah, that's what I would say. I was just, I was going off of impulses and I was trying to uh, fill this void with pleasure. And so I read this, I think it was by, uh, man, I forgot, you know, constantly seeking pleasure won't be pleasurable no more. You know what I mean? If you constantly try to eat food to fill that void, because Eating is the quickest way to change your emotions. That's why so many men and women, if you notice, there's there's more women that's obese because something broke their heart or they're going through some adversity or some pain in their life. So they're using food to soothe that pain and it's not doing nothing for them. So they're constantly eating. They're constantly stuffing their mouth and it's it's not helping them. You know, that's what I was doing with women and just anything I can get from people, I was doing. So basically, like, let's say if I had a... I could have had some true... I mean, I did. I still do have true friends, but a lot of people in high school, I was just using them. Like, they really thought I was that chill, mellow guy, which I am, but I was using them for other things, like money, weed, you know. Help them get... I would use them to help me get this other girl that I wanted, even though I had a girlfriend. You know, just all kind of messed up stuff. Yeah, see? Marcus Cicero or Marcus Tullius Cicero, you probably heard of him. He was inspired by people like Aristotle around the same time as them. The greatest pleasures are only narrowly separated from disgust. Yeah. You know, like, after a while, you just constantly... I was constantly having sex with with women to fill this void of pain that I had and it wasn't helping me. I just felt disgusted in myself as a person. And you know, all men, all men and women are the same, but their habits differ, their, their habits differ. So when you're chasing pleasure it, it, in a, with, within a minute or two, you'll start to feel disgusted in yourself. Like, why am I constantly eating donuts? Why am I constantly having sex to fill this void when deep down I'm not genuinely happy, you know? Pleasure is labor too, and tires as much. William Cowper, yeah. Like, uh, man, I would do a lot of stuff in high school, like, I would I would manipulate I would emotionally manipulate women not like verbally but like I would guilt them into like even though we just had like three or four rounds like no I still need more like you're tired come on I need more and now that I think back like I feel I feel guilt you know because guilt is from you and shame is from the public so I never received shame from people because I never really listened to people but myself. That's all I did was listen to myself. The pleasures of love are always in proportion to our fears. Stendhal. I might have to check him out because that is a really deep quote. The highest pleasure is only consciousness of freedom from the deepest pain. James Parton. That is, that is extremely deep. <clears throat> but yeah, let me read some more for you. Yeah, Plato, pleasure is the greatest incentive to evil. It really is. You know, you think you're doing good because you feel good doing it, but you're really doing bad to yourself, you know. That's why I say the human mind works in really interesting ways, you know. 
if you constantly eat the same food after a while it will become tasteless to you because you've done it so much that it's like this groove of snow that it, it it's like rolling the snow a snowball down a mountain it's gonna create this avalanche or it's gonna create this huge groove where every time you try to sled down instead of you trying to sled down this way you're gonna keep falling into that groove you know to the point where it's not even snow there no more you can actually see the mountain or you can see the hill it's not pleasure no more enjoy present pleasures enjoy present pleasures in such a way as not to injure future ones seneca yeah like i totally agree with that one half of the world cannot understand understand the pleasures of the other jane austen exactly you know your pleasures may be sex or masturbation or video games and another person's pleasures may be um eating and working out you know now my pleasures is working out constantly but yeah that's that's the uh recap for today stay happy stay ambitious and stay resilient all love